now you can pause this image and revise the things what we have learned already this is a very important thing to understand all the functional component to understand the cranial nerve nuclei as well as the functions of the each and every cranial nerve which will be very helpful to understand most of the topic of the neuroanatomy when you studied later on now let's see the all the cranial nerves with their functions very briefly and try to understand the functional component of that cranial nerve so when we see the first cranial nerve that is the olfactory cranial nerve this cranial nerve it is responsible for the smell sensation from the nose and this smell sensation it is the special sense and it is from the somatic part of the body and that's why this is called as the special somatic afferent type of the component the second cranial nerve that is the optic cranial nerve and this optic cranial nerve is responsible for carrying the vision sensation and the sense of vision it is not a general sensation it is the special sensation and it is concerned with the derived structure of the ectoderm and that's why this is from the somatic part of the body and that's why this sensation will be carried by the special somatic afferent functional functional component the third cranial nerve that is the oculomotor nerve and that oculomotor nerve it is responsible for providing the nerve supply to the extraocular muscles as well as it is also responsible for providing the parasympathetic fiber to the ciliaris muscle as well as the sphincter pupillae muscle this component of the oculomotor nerve which is responsible for providing the nerve supply to the extraocular muscle and that component it is called as the general somatic efferent component as this extraocular muscles are the skeleton muscles which are not derived from the brachial arch that's why they are general somatic group of muscles and the nerve supply from this oculomotor nerve to this extraocular muscle should consider as the general somatic efferent component of the oculomotor nerve this parasympathetic fibers to the ciliaris and the sphincter pupillae muscle that is the smooth muscle of the orbit and this muscles they are getting the nerve supply from the general visceral efferent type of the component the fourth cranial nerve that is the trochlear nerve this trochlear nerve it is responsible for providing the nerve supply to the superior oblique muscle and the superior oblique muscle it is one of the extra ocular muscle so the component of this trochlear nerve it is the general somatic efferent type of the fiber the sixth nerve that is the abducens nerve and that is also responsible for providing the nerve supply to the extra ocular muscle the name is the lateral rectus muscle and that's why the fiber of the obducent nerve which is going to supply this lateral rectus muscle it comes under the general somatic efferent group of fiber the fifth cranial nerve that is the trigeminal nerve which having three divisions the ophthalmic division maxillary division and mandibular division this ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular divisions they are responsible for getting the general sensations from the face and that's why this all these three having the general somatic afferent type of the component along with this this mandibular nerve having the motor component of the trigeminal nerve 
and that is responsible for providing the nerve supply to the muscles of the mastication and these muscles of the mastication they are derived from the branchial arches and that's why the component from the mandibular nerve it is called as the spatial visceral efferent group of component when we see the facial nerve that is the seventh cranial nerve which is which having uh, so many function and one of the function is the muscle to the uh, the nerve supply to the muscle of the facial expression other function it also provide the sensory supply of the taste from the anterior two third of the tongue via the coda tympani now the another function of this facial now is to provide the parasympathetic fiber to the submandibular as well as the sublingual and the lacrimal gland via the submandibular ganglion and the trigopalatine ganglion so the secretomotor fiber to the gland it is also one of the function of the facial now so the fiber of the facial nerve which is responsible for providing the nerve supply to the facial expression muscles and this group of component this fiber it is called as the spatial visceral efferent group of component because this facial expression muscle are derived from the branchial arches the fiber of the facial nerve which carries the taste sensation from the tongue and this taste sensation it is the spatial sensation and it is derived from the endoderm and that's why this component is called as the spatial visceral afferent type of the component the secretomotor gland to the secretomotor fiber to the gland provided by this facial nerve via the trigopalatine ganglion and submandibular ganglion these are parasympathetic fibers and they are concerned with the general sense these are concerned with the general portion of the body as the glands are also present within the all over the part of the body and these are not somatic in nature these are visceral in nature because these are the glands and the secreto motor fibers are there so the fiber they are motor in nature and that's why efferent component is there so secreto motor fiber to the gland via the facial nerve it is the general visceral efferent component now when we see the eighth cranial nerve that is the vestibulo cochlear nerve and this vestibulo cochlear nerve it is responsible for the sense of hearing via the cochlear nerve and sense of balance via the vestibular nerve and because this hearing and the balance sensations are the special type of the sensations and the inner ear which is actually derived from the ectoderm and that's why this vestibulo cochlear nerve supplying the inner ear carrying the sensation of hearing and balance they will be via the special somatic afferent component when we see the ninth cranial nerve that is the glossopharyngeal nerve this ninth cranial nerve that is the glossopharyngeal nerve it is responsible for providing the nerve supply to the stylopharyngeus muscle it is also responsible for carrying the test sensation from the posterior two third of the tongue it is also responsible for providing the nerve supply to the carotid body as well as the carotid sinus and this fiber this glossopharyngeal nerve also provide the parasympathetic fiber to the parotid gland via otic ganglion along with all these functions this glossopharyngeal nerve also responsible for carrying the general sensations near the ear so this glossopharyngeal nerve having so many functional component within it the functional component which is responsible for providing the nerve supply to the stylopharyngeus muscle 
it is the special visceral efferent type of the component as this is derived the stylopharyngeus muscle is derived from the brachial arch the test sensation from the posterior two third part of the tongue which will be carried by the glossopharyngeal nerve via the special visceral afferent type of the component the carotid body and the carotid sinus carry the chemoreceptor and the baroreceptor respectively and this this receptors will be supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve having the general visceral afferent type of the component because this carotid body and carotid sinus baroreceptor as well as the chemoreceptors they are present other than this carotid body and carotid sinus also in the body and these are the general sensations and they this general sensations are from the viscera not from the body wall that's why it is a visceral component so the component it is the general visceral afferent component the parasympathetic fiber to the parotid gland via the otic ganglion via this of the glossopharyngeal nerve general visceral efferent type of the component and the general sensation near the ear will be carried via this glossopharyngeal nerve it is including it carries the general somatic afferent type of the component so this glossopharyngeal nerve having this five types of the functional component when we see the vagus nerve it is the tenth it is the 10th cranial nerve the, this vagus nerve provides motor supply to the muscles of the larynx as well as it is also responsible for providing the nerve supply to the muscles of the soft palate and the pharynx so this component of this vagus nerve it is the special visceral efferent type of the component the other area of distribution of this vagus nerve it is towards the general glands of the gastrointestinal tract along with the smooth muscles and the glands and the smooth muscles they will be provided by the general visceral efferent type of the component this vagus nerve also carries the general sensation from the viscera of the gastrointestinal tract up to the right two third of the transverse colon and this general sensations includes the dull pain in the abdomen as well as the peristalsis movement and this comes under the general visceral afferent type of the component this vagus nerve also carries the general sensation near the ear and this general sensation this is from the soma or we can say somatic part of the body and that's why this sensation will come under the general somatic afferent type of the component and very importantly this vagus nerve it carries the taste sensation from the posterior most part of the tongue when we talk about the accessory cranial nerve it having two part the cranial part and the spinal part this cranial part of the accessory nerve provide the nerve supply to the muscles of the soft palate pharynx and some muscles of the larynx with the vagus nerve and that's why this component will comes under the special visceral efferent type of the component and the spinal part of the accessory nerve provides nerve supply to the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscle and that's why this muscles they are the general skeleton muscles and comes under the general somatic efferent type of the component and when we see the 12th cranial nerve that is the hypoglossal nerve that provides the nerve supply to the muscles of the tongue most of the muscles of the tongue and that's why this component it is called under the general somatic efferent type of the component because the muscles of the tongue are not derived from the branchial arches so all these are the cranial nerves with their functional components very briefly so you can pause this image and revise the things